Everyone ready to try one on your own? <laughs> now let's do one more together. And then these two are almost identical. So we'll do one more together and then you guys can try one on your own. How about that? So we have a little reminder here. Well, not a reminder. This is a little piece that maybe you don't know. Um, if there is a missing term, we have to write a zero in its place. Otherwise, the polynomial won't line up. So before you start, you look for missing terms. M to the third, M to the second, M to the first, no M. So not a missing term. Then look here, x to the third, x to, oh, there's no x to the second. So what I write in when I go to turn it into a division problem is zero x to the second because the terms don't line up correctly if you don't have everyone accounted for. So x to the third, x to the second, x to the first, no x. So now that one's good. And I know I put one on the test that has a missing term. So you'll see as you work the problem, you'll go, why do I have an x squared underneath an x cubed? It's because you forgot to fill a zero in. So, Okay, so let's do four, and then you guys can try three. And what most students have told me on this section is they have to go home, get on Alex, do three or four, and then all of a sudden they start getting easy. But they definitely do take practice. It's not something you'll just know how to do by watching a couple in class. So first we write the divisor outside and we already looked and we saw that there weren't any missing terms. So just carry those down. So whatever's uh, in the denominator always becomes the divisor what goes outside. So 3m cubed plus 7m squared minus 16m plus 16. I'm going to pause the video. My neighbor's here for their dog. One second. Sorry about that. Dog sitting. Okay, so let's start our problem. So let's put our DMS here so that we can track our progress through the problem. So divide. We always divide the front terms. I can use green on this. So we divide this term by this term. So let's go over here in the front. And most students are visual learners, so it's probably a really good idea. Oh, Kim, don't talk and write. It's probably a really good idea to write it so you can see it. So when I divide those, I get 3 divided by 1, which is 3, 3 minus 1 m squared. So that's going to be my first quotient. So I go up above the squared term and write 3m squared. And then I click off D for the first time. And we have problems that we'll go through this DMS three or four times. So like 12 step problems. So they, they do get a little long, but if you keep track of where you're at, it's a lot easier not to get lost. So step two says multiply. So remember, I have to multiply this by everything in front. So 3m squared times m. Once again, here's 4.1. Add your exponents and multiplication. So this will be 3m to the third for the first term, and then plus 12m squared. Okay, so our multiplication's done for the first time. And then remember the little poem. Draw the line, change the signs. So all the signs in the bottom row get changed. This would be a really good time to make sure you have a colored pen or pencil. Because if you use the same color, you're not going to know which signs right and which signs not right. So I always tell students when you change the signs, make sure and use a different color. So now I'm ready to subtract 3 minus 3. As I said, if you've done it correctly, those front terms should always cancel. And this is probably the most common thing. Students change the front sign and they forget to change that. You have to change every sign in the second row. 7 minus 12 is negative 5m squared 
And just like regular long division, then you bring down one more term. So negative 16m. So subtraction's done for the first time. And now you don't have to sit and go, oh, what's my next step? What's my next step? You go back to the beginning. You start over like a brand new problem. And I can tell how many times I'm going to have to go through it. One, two, three, because I have to have a number above each one. So I'm going to have nine check marks here, nine steps by the time I'm done. OK, so I'm back to division. So it's the front term divided by the front term. And if you want to call that 1m, you can. That might help you. So negative 5m squared divided by 1m. So negative 5 divided by 1 is negative 5. 2 minus 1 is into the first. So that's my second quotient. And it goes above my m term. So here's my m term. So I'm going to write negative 5m. So division's done for the second time. Now we need to extend these over here. So it's negative 5m times m, which is negative 5m squared. And then it's negative 5m times 4, which is negative 20m. So we always distribute the new quotient to everything in front using its sign too. So negative 5m times m, negative 5m squared. Negative 5m times 4, negative 20m. Draw the line. Change the sign. See how they're both negative? So now they both need to become positive. So every sign in the bottom row gets changed. So draw the line, change the sign. So multiplication's done. We distributed. Now we're ready to subtract. So 5 minus 5, 0. Boom. That cancels like it should. Here we used a different color, so it's easy to tell this is negative 16m plus 20m, which would be 20 minus 16, 4m. And then we're ready to bring the last item down. So subtraction done for the second time. And now I don't have to sit and go, hmm, hmm, I wonder what's next. I go right back to the beginning and start over. So that's why it's nice to have those steps there so you never have to go, what's next? So front term divided by front term. So this will be 4m divided by 1m. So m divided by m is 1. 4 divided by 1 is 4. So this is positive 4, which will be our next quotient. Sorry, kind of in the box there. So division's done for the last time. I can tell it's at the end because it's the last time because it's over the last number. So now I extend this and multiply. 4 times m, 4m. 4 times 4, positive 16. So multiplication's done for the last time. Then I draw the line. Guess when's the most common time for students to forget to change the signs? Right now. So what that happen, what happens is it makes them miss the remainder. So you still, every time you draw that line, you have to change the signs. So they were both positive. So I made them both negative. And my remainder is 4 minus 4, 0. 16 minus 16, 0. So my quotient is 3m squared minus 5m plus 4. Did I tell you these problems were long? <laughs> I wasn't exaggerating, was I? And that is a typical one that you would have on a test or in homework. OK, time to turn off the video. And now it's your turn to try number five. And then come back and join me. OK, so this one, the divisor is x minus 4. And the dividend is 2x cubed. There's a missing exponent, too, so we write plus 0x squared minus 38x plus 24. So 2x cubed 
plus 0x squared minus 38x plus 24. So we're back to DMS. So divide, let's use a different color here. Divide the front term by the front term. So this is going to be 2x cubed divided by 1x. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 3 minus 1, x squared. So I go above the x squared term and write 2x squared as my first quotient, and I check off the division. So everybody do the first step right. So then I'm ready to multiply, multiply, multiply. So this would be 2x to the third positive and negative 8x squared. Draw the line, change the signs, positive turns to negative, negative turns to positive. Multiplication's done for the first time. Now we're ready to subtract. 2 minus 2, 0. That always cancels if you've done it right. 0 plus 8 is 8x squared. And I bring down one more number, minus 38x. And subtraction's done for the first time. And I can see I'm going to have to go through those steps three times because there's three empty terms there when I line up like terms. Back to the beginning, division. So we have 8x squared divided by 1x. So 8x squared divided by 1x. 8 divided by 1 is 8. 2 minus 1 is x to the first. And it's positive. So in my quotient, I write plus 8x right above the x term. So division's done. Now I multiply. So 8x squared minus 32x. Multiplies done. Draw the line, change the signs, and then we have a new thing coming down. <clears throat> so front terms cancel, yay! Negative 38 plus 32 would be negative 6x, and then bring down your plus 24. So subtraction's done, so we have one more trip through the cycle. So I don't have to sit and go, what's next? What's next? I see my check, so I know to start over. So divide negative 6x by 1x. Negative 6 divided by 1 is negative 6. X's cancel. So my next quotient for the quotient bar is negative 6. And I'm done with division for the last time. And I can see that. See how I'm above the last term? So now I just extend these and multiply. Negative 6 times x is negative 6x. Negative 6 times negative 4 is positive 24. Multiplication done. Draw the line. Change the signs. Negative turns to positive. Positive turns to negative. And it looks like we have another remainder of zero. Not usually the case, I will tell you that. But we have a couple here that have remainders coming up. So my quotient is, just read the top line, 2x squared plus 8x minus 6. So I wonder how you guys did. Like I said, you have to go through about three or four of them kind of on your own rather than copying them because you're not really learning a whole lot by copying them. You know, it's best when you try some on your own. So last semester I put a problem like six on the test. So I would say I'll probably put something like five or six. So let's highlight those two. And then we'll start number six in the next video. So five and six. And this is also on the final exam. And it's a big topic in this class because in the next class you use it to find oblique asymptotes. And so you have to know how to do long division.